Good evening, everybody. I, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody. Please, uh, if you'd like to sit down, we have a few seats left. I know it's a hot night. Uh, I'm so excited to be here tonight here in the city of Brockton for uh, the long-awaited groundbreaking of the new Brockton, City of Brockton Public Safety Building, which is going to be a state-of-the-art building housing four departments. It's going to house our fire department. They're going to be leaving the Pleasant Street Station 1 that was wired by Thomas Edison, and it was uh, built specifically for horse-drawn carriages. The police department is going to leave the police station abutting the railroad tracks. Our informational technology, our IT department, is going to be leaving Brockton High School up in the core building. It's going to free up four to five classrooms for the boys and girls in the city of Brockton at Brockton High. And then uh, lastly, the fourth department, but not least, is BEMA, Brockton Emergency Management, which will be leaving the War Memorial over uh, across the street to come into this building. So I want to thank all of you for being here tonight. Uh, before we get in, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to welcome back a few folks. I'd like to welcome back uh, former Mayor Jack Units. I want to thank you, Mayor, for being here. I want to welcome, in the history of Brockton, she broke the glass ceiling, former mayor, always a mayor, Linda Belzotti. Mayor, thank you. I want to also thank Mayor and currently my counselor at large, Wynn Farwell. Thank you, Mayor, for being here. I know that uh, I know that former mayor and counselor at large, Moises Rodriguez, will be joining us as well tonight. But this is a really a wonderful night. I want to thank uh, the state delegation. I want Senator Mike Brady is here. Thank you, Senator, for being here. <laughs> Representative Jerry Cassidy. Representative, thank you for being here tonight. I know uh, Representative Michelle Dubois is, is actually in New Hampshire. Representative slash Councilor Lodge, Rita Mendez, is, is back home in Brazil. But uh, they have been unbelievable advocates on this endeavor. So I want to thank all the state delegation. I also want to uh, welcome back and thank, uh, once a chief, always a chief. We have three fire chiefs here today. We have Ken Galligan, Richie Francis, and Mike Williams. Chiefs, thank you. I'm going to read off some of the uh, current elected officials, but before I do that, unbelievable friend, unbelievable dedicated public servant, former counselor, Dennis Denapoli. Counselor, thanks for being back here tonight. Public County Registry of Deeds, unbelievable, unbelievable guy. John Buckley, thanks for being here today, John. So we have Councilor Shirley Azak. Councilor, thanks for being here. We have School Committee woman Joyce Azak, thank you for being here. City Councilor Jack Lally, Councilor, thanks for being here tonight. City Council President from Ward 4, Susan DeCastro. Thank you for being here, Madam President. we got a wonderful elected officials in the county. And again, Brockton's the only city in Plymouth County. But we have some unbelievable folks that go to bat for the county, but always go to bat for the city of Brockton. What's good for Brockton is good for the county. I want to thank Sheriff Joe McDonald. Sheriff, thank you for being here tonight. I know our, uh, our district attorney, Tim Cruz, is, is going to try to make it tonight as well. But D.A. Cruz is always an advocate as well, so I want to thank him. <laughs> School committee member from uh, Ward 4, Tony Rodriguez. Thanks for being here tonight, Tony. Uh, City Councilor Jeff Thompson. Councilor, thanks for being here tonight. When this building opens, this gentleman uh, is going to be a direct neighbor, the executive director of the Housing Authority, uh, Tom Tebow. Thanks for being here tonight, Tom. I also know, uh, and, and he's a really a wonderful uh, advocate for our homeless population, John Yazinski, who's the president of Father Bill's Mainspring, is here tonight. Think about politics, you don't want to skip anybody, huh? I know Jack Raven, former Plum County Commissioner, is here. Jack, thank you for uh, what you do. So when we were planning this uh, wonderful event tonight, uh, I also, President of uh, 144 Brockton Firefighters, Billy Hill. Thank you, Billy. When we were planning this event, uh, I invited uh, 
my dear friend, again, a guy that was born in Southie, but he just as could have easily been born in the city of Brockton, Steve Lynch, Congressman Lynch, and he reached right back out to me and said, Bob, I'd be there if I could, but I'm in session at Capitol Hill, but I'll be there for the, for the ribbon cutting. And so our congressman, who has always gone to bat for us with uh, CARES Act money, with federal earmark money, uh, and with ARPA money, uh, again, he's here in spirit tonight, as is our two U.S. Senators, Elizabeth Warren and, and Senator Ed Markey, who again are in session in Washington, D.C. Um, this is step one when we, uh, when we do the dirt tonight and, and the groundbreaking, but really the, the fun's going to be getting when we open the door and we cut the ribbon. And our friends from Suffolk, you're going to hear from Suffolk Construction, uh, Mr. John Fish, the CEO, couldn't join us tonight, but we have wonderful folks that, that manage and work, and it's a team at Suffolk. And we have the best team dedicated to the city of Brockton on this endeavor. I had uh, indicated to Suffolk uh, that I need this thing open in two years' time. So summer of 25 is a promise and a commitment. They'll achieve that promise and commitment. So in two years' time, we're going to be back here, and then all the men and women that work for those four departments are going to be going into an unbelievable new, new building. So I, I know our friends from Suffolk are here. We'll be hearing from them, but thank you, thank you, thank you, Suffolk Construction. So when we were planning this endeavor, um, we needed to figure out how we were going to get the, uh, the skilled professionals to assist us on this endeavor. And I know uh, the thought process for the public safety building had been going on when, when Jack Units was our dear mayor. And then it continued with Jimmy Harrington, uh, Linda Balzotti, the late Bill, Bill Carpenter, late Mayor Bill Carpenter, and, and Moses Rodriguez, and then myself. And, so I just happen to be the mayor right now uh, in the year 2023 to, to see it come to fruition. But these were the mayors that started the conversation with all the city councilors. I know Councilor Tennessee and Airy and Tom Brophy and Todd Petty. We're going to try to make it tonight. There's so many people we could talk about. But at the end of the day, the goal was to modernize a building. And we needed to find the location. And I remember when Chief Mike Williams came before the city council uh, and articulated some locations. Some had thought about the old CSX property, and then we hadn't thought about, listen, with the apparatus, you're not going to get under the bridges. And you want to be close to Route 24, because Brockton Fire and Brockton Police at times will respond to Route 24. And I always knew deep down that this would be the best location. But what I didn't know is what we needed to do to achieve that location. As you may recall, as like my Brocktonians, we had two houses here on Highland, and then we had 99 Warren Ave right over there. So when I became mayor, I told our, and we actually have the best solicitor in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and attorney Megan Bridges and her team. And um, you know, I, I, had said, I had said to attorney Bridges, I said, Megan, I don't know how we're gonna do it, you know, but we're gonna do it. And uh, she rolled up her sleeves and she got it done. So 99 Warren Ave, as you know, which was an eyesore, all the fire and police officers responded to that place uh, many, many, many times. Uh, it was a troubled building, and it's gone now. And then Highland Street, the two properties, we did friendly takings. And so when you acquire property, you can either do a friendly taking, or you can do a hostile taking, and hostile takings are never good. So we were actually able to do, through the efforts of uh, our esteemed attorney, three takings. And so I wanted it to be a full city block. I wanted it to go from Highland Street to West Elm Street, a full city block because that's what the men and women deserve. They deserve a location that's gonna be the square footage, that's gonna have all the bells and whistles that they need. But I also uh, understood that we needed to try to figure out how to change Warren Avenue, which is one way currently, right? So from Vincente's on Pleasant Street to Belmont Street where Rockland Trust and the courthouse is, it's one way. And so we are going to make it two way, again, through the efforts of our DPW Commissioner, Pat Hill, our economic advisor, city planner, Rob May, our attorney, Megan Bridges. But at the end of the day, um, we will be having two-way traffic here again. So, if you're a Brockton resident or if you're a visitor to this wonderful, wonderful city of champions, for the next year and a half, it's going to be a little bit of an inconvenience, right? You've already experienced that in terms of detours and stuff, but I'll tell you, it's going to be worth it. So just deal with it for a little bit. Please be patient. Because at the end of the day, the finished product is going to be something that is going to be awe-inspiring throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So when we decided to go forward on this location, we needed to hire, a, it's called an OPM, right? An Owner's Project Manager. And so we vetted out and uh, interviewed, and I was uh, an advocate to interview each and every applicant. Uh, it's about transparency and letting everybody have a fair crack at it. But CHA companies stood out. And so I want to thank Joe Sullivan and 
Kevin Sullivan and Connor Sullivan. I want to thank the Sullivan team. Not related to me, but you can never have too many Sullivans in a room, so God bless you all. But through the, uh, through the experience of, uh, of CHA, and then we went with an architect uh, group, uh, uh, KBA Architects, uh, Sean Schmeagel and Todd Cost and their team as well. We had the brain trust, right? We had the, the skilled people that knew what, what we wanted to do. Uh, but then we also traveled around Massachusetts to look at other public safety buildings, right? Because we wanted to see, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to make it our, our own uh, because we're a special location, a special municipality with special employees. But I think we took little pieces of advice and, and we stole some ideas from other cities and towns throughout Massachusetts. But without CHA and KBA, we wouldn't be here today as well. So I want to thank you all for what you do each and every day. I also want to thank our outside legal counsel. Uh, I want to thank West Law Group. Um, again, um, you know, we always need um, skilled people to help us as we try to navigate the uncertainty. So I want to thank West Law Group. I want to thank Tip, uh, especially Tip Doris for what you've done. Uh, I want to thank Mr. West as well. But, you know, we're all in this together, right? I keep saying this, and it might be a broken record, but we truly are better together. But we're better together because the city is on the trajectory. It's a renaissance in the city. I think if, if, if Jack Units, um, you know, when he was trying to advocate for this, I think it was a different time. I know it was a different time, right? But we've been able to stay the course, keep the eyes on the prize through many administrations, many different leadership changes in police and fire. But the core idea is always the same. And so today is the beginning of an unbelievable endeavor. I want to thank my mayor's team and the mayor's office. I want to thank Sidney Merrill, my chief of staff, and everybody that works in my office. You know, people say, oh, you have a great staff, a great employees. No, I have a great team, so I want to thank you. Well, can you give a round of applause to the mayor's office, please? <laughs> and again, at the end of the day, and, and we do a weekly department meetings where I have all the department heads come before us, and, you know, um, we have wonderful people that have the shared vision that I have. And I say this, and I mean this. You're either going to be on the canoe and we're going in the right direction, or you should be off getting a life preserver because you're not on, going to be on my canoe. And everybody's bought into that mantra, and everybody understands that Brockton is truly, truly a special place, right? It's a privilege to work for the city of Brockton. It's a, it's a privilege to live in the city of Brockton. It was definitely a privilege to grow up in the city of Brockton. I want to thank my mom and dad. Bob and Sue Sullivan, because I wouldn't be here without them, and that's a fact. You know, but I'm, I'm thankful of the, the men and women that serve and protect every day, right? Um, we have great leadership in Brian Nardelli and Brenda Perez leading the respective departments, but we have great leadership at all departments as well, right? The DPW staff and Pat Hill and, and his team, Mark Peterson. Um, you know, the DPW is vital on this project, but they're also vital each and every day here in the city of Brock. And same thing with the building department, with Jim Pluff, the, the building supervisor, commissioner, and the team at the building department. Again, I mentioned Rob from the planning office and the team there. But there's a guy that's not here, he's on vacation this week, but none of us would be here today without this guy. And this guy has worked for Mayor Units, and Mayor Harrington, Mayor Balzotti, Mayor Carpenter, uh, Mayor Rodriguez, and now myself. His name is Mike Morris, and if you know Mike Morris, you're privileged. If you don't know him, you've got to meet the guy. And he's our procurement officer. And uh, without, without Michael's expertise uh, navigating Massachusetts procurement and all those fun Massachusetts general laws, we wouldn't be here. So he's here in spirit. Uh, but Mike Morris and the procurement team are unbelievable. Another, uh, another individual that's here um, is, is Troy Claxon, our CFO, our chief financial officer, and his team. And, um, you know, Troy was hired under Mayor Carpenter, and, and uh, I remember having coffee with him at Starbucks uh, after I had won the, uh, the general election in November, and I said, you want to stay on? And he's like, if you want me to stay on, Mayor, I'll stay on. I said, yeah, I want you to stay on, because good things are going to be happening, and I need someone that understands finance, but understands politics and government as well. And, as well. and, and Troy and his team have done really unbelievable work, um, working with the city council, working with my office, working with the schools. But again, when you borrow $98 million, think about that, a $98 million bond authorization, um, I have to thank the city council. Because had they not approved it, we wouldn't be here tonight. But when I went before them, and I had a wonderful uh, opportunity to, to speak to all of them prior to that vote, and I'm going to continue to do that, because I served up there 14 years, and I respect each and every man and woman that serves as a, a city council. It's a special job. It's a tough job. It's not really a part-time job, they say it is. It's not, it's a full-time job. And the city council 
understood when I stood before them how important. You're talking almost 100 million bucks. Think about that. And when they authorized it, the next thing I did is I went down to Troy's office after I quickly went. And I want to thank Tim Cruz, our city clerk. Tim was the award once uh, city councilor. I want to thank the clerk. I want to thank our former clerk as well, Tony Zioli. But I remember running to the clerk's office to sign that thing so no one could change their mind. Right? I wanted to get it done. But then I went down to Troy's office and I said, hey, Troy, what are the interest rates today? And he said, well, Mayor, they're in the 2%. I said, let's borrow the money today. we got to lock in right now, man. Let's go. And uh, he and our financial advisors um, did just that. And so if you think about it, we locked in in the twos. And over the term, interest rates are in the fives. Over the term of this project, we're saving tens and tens of millions of dollars because we locked in early. So I think that speaks volumes, right? Because at the end of the day, when I went down to, CF, to see the CFO, he could have said, no, you know, let's wait. Maybe the interest will fluctuate. Maybe it'll go down. And, but no, because he understood how important this project was. So um, one final, and we're going to hear, some, it's going to be short and sweet tonight, but I, I do want to say one other final person in his team is superintendent of schools for Brockton Public Schools, Mike Thomas, um, because this was the champion high school, right? First it was Brock, the old Brockton High, right? And building A and B, and we have a few people that, that went to school there. And, and then, you know, we had the Arnold School here after Dr. Arnold, and if you were a smart kid like Dave Wedge, uh, this was the A2 for the real smart kids. I wasn't there, I was at the Whitman School. Farwell, you were at the Whitman School. Too, right? yeah, we weren't A2. But I'll tell you, uh, it went on to be the champion high school. And so when I, um, and I decided that this should be the right location. Um, I needed to speak to Mike, I needed to speak to all the school committee members as well, because I made a pledge. We're not gonna move the students and staff from Champion until we find a better location. And we found that location on Summer Street on the east side. Um, it was the former May Institute. Uh, it was a nursing home when I was a kid. And we were able to buy that location for $4 million. But then the better thing is we got reimbursed 100% the $4 million from our friends in the county under the, uh, the ARPA money. So we paid $4 million and we got reimbursed $4 million. So um, it's a better location, it's a better building, it has a gymnasium. So then I decided to do, and a lot of you were there, um, I decided to do a, a farewell tour of this building. And we opened it up on a Saturday, and we had, I thought we were going to have maybe, or did I say Sydney, we probably have about 10 people. I think we had about uh, 350 people show up that day, graduates from Brockton High, 58, 59, and, and the 60s, all the way up to 69, and again, the new high school opened in 70. But then we had a lot of kids that went here as elementary school. And I'll tell you, what amazed me is, is they walked around, and, uh, and then when they were leaving, they said, uh, do you mind saving a brick for us? I said, yeah, we'll save a brick for you. We'll save as many bricks as you want. So we have a list of like, now it's like 600 people that want a brick of this building. Uh, so Suffolk, save about 1,000 bricks, will you? But I, I only say that because a lot of these folks, when I talk to them, they don't live in Brockton anymore. A lot of them live in the North Shore, somewhere in Rhode Island. A couple of people from Maine came down. But what that says is that once a Brocktonian, always a Brocktonian, right? You never lose that. Just like once a mayor, always a mayor. Once a council, always a council. Once a firefighter, once a cop, always a police officer, always a firefighter. But being that in Brockton is that much more. So again, I'm just excited. When we did this today, I didn't know how many people would be here. But think about this. You could be anywhere on a beautiful night, but you're here. And that speaks volumes to the city of Brockton. Thank you, Joe Murray. After this, go see Joe up at Ten Race, one of the best pizzas. And if the Jamulis is here, go down to the car, one of the best pizzas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the 17th are open. Yeah, but they can, you can work this magic now. Tonight, though, I'm going to ask a couple individuals to say some words. I'm going to ask our um, City Council President, Suna Castle, to say some words. I'm going to ask the CFO, Troy Clarkson, to say a few words. And then I want to hear from the four department heads uh, that are going to be going into this building and leading. I want to hear from Brockton Fire Chief Brian Adeli, Brockton Chief of Police Brenda Perez, Brockton Emergency Management Agency BEMA Executive Director Stephen Hook. And then I want to hear from our Acting Director of the Brockton Department of Informational Technology, Ted Medeiros. And then we're going to hear from Suffolk, and then we're going to go over and, and do the wonderful event. So I'm going to open it up right now for our esteemed Council President, Attorney Susan DeCastro. of 2020, 
an order was proposed to the Brockton City Council to appropriate $98 million to pay the cost of designing, constructing, and equipping a public safety complex to house police, fire, information technology, and emergency management departments of the city of Brockton. It was a long time coming. Having toured the police station, several of the fire stations, taken classes from IT at Brockton High, I long believed that our departments deserved better homes than what they had. And I was so pleased to support the borrowing to make the complex possible. It was also a bit of a leap of faith because we didn't have in our control all of the land that we needed to make this possible. We didn't have the land I believe you're on right now to make this possible, but it was a worthy leap of faith. And the city council members and I wanted our public safety employees to work in conditions that reflect how appreciative the city is of their work keeping us safe. After healthy discussion, the borrowing was approved by a majority of the city council in January of 2021. Later that year, in April and December, a majority of the council also voted to approve the imminent domain takings of the property we stand on today. Brockton expects a lot of the men and women who will work in this complex that we break ground for today. As president of the city council, I applaud the efforts of Mayor Sullivan, City Solicitor Bridges, Chief Financial Officer Clarkson, Police Chief Perez, Fire Chief Nardelli, and so many others who worked hard to make this, to make today possible. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Madam President. Again, thank you to the City Council members for supporting this endeavor. At this time, CFO, Mr. Troy Claxon. We were just planning our first payment on the death, that's what that was. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, Mr. Mayor, former mayors, members of the city council, and all of our distinguished guests. I am beaming with pride to be here before you today because I'm not only the chief financial officer, but I'm a native son of Brockton. My dad grew up just down the street on Ash Street, and my mother grew up just a few miles away on Plain Street. I was born here and lived here with my family until we moved to the Cape when I was a kid. But I've always had family here, and as the mayor said, once a Brocktonian, always a Brocktonian. And I've always maintained that connection and that sense of pride in being from the city of champions. So when Mayor Carpenter offered me the job, it was an opportunity, literally, to come home. And for nearly five years, it's been my honor to serve as the city's chief financial officer. And projects like this only happen once in a career. But what we were able to do working together, and why I'm speaking today, is not only borrow $98 million to construct this building, but because the mayor and the city council always have the taxpayers of this great city in mind, we were able to do that without raising taxes. That was the city council that began that applause appropriately. But I'll repeat that. We were able to do this without raising taxes. That is no easy feat. But we did it working together. The first step in that was long before we borrowed the $98 million for this public safety complex, the mayor and I approached the city council, who again did their homework, worked closely with us, and we borrowed $300 million to almost fully fund the city's pension obligation. That was a retiree that started that applause. But by doing so, we saved tens of millions of dollars over the 15 years of that pension obligation debt. And it's that money, that savings, that we were able to then use to pay the debt for this building. And that's how we were able to do it without raising taxes. It's tough enough uh, today, in today's challenging times, 
to build and buy things in government and do it in an affordable way. But this truly was a team effort. And you hear that a lot and that's a buzzword. But I'll tell you, the city councilors did their homework and I met with them individually and as a group. And we reviewed the figures and, and then they were able to go to the constituents and explain it in a way that everybody was able to support it and wrap their arms around it. So today is a proud day, not just for the elected officials here and for the public safety officials, but for every taxpayer in Brockton who were able to have a state-of-the-art, the finest public safety building in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And they were all able to join in that effort. I was chatting with Sheriff Joe McDonald just before the ceremony started, and I was explaining what I just explained to all of you. And what the sheriff said is very true. He said, Troy, buildings like this are why people pay their taxes. And that's very true. So everyone that's here and everyone that's connected to this city or this project in any way should be proud. Because today is the culmination not only of the effort of the people here under this tent, but of every taxpayer and citizen in this city of Brockton. So I'm very proud to be here with you today. Thank you very much. Remember when I told you uh, I had coffee at Starbucks with Troy? Well, he told me the same thing. He was born in Brockton, his mom and dad. So I ran to the clerk's office and pulled his birth certificate. He wasn't lying to us. He truly was. So it's just not registered to vote here anymore. We've got to change that. At this time, uh, this is a guy that was born and raised in the city of Brockton. And I know his family, his wife Ann and, and children are here tonight. And, and he's a guy that uh, he bleeds red and black. He loves the city of Brockton. And, and, uh, He's someone leading the fire department, and he is just a, a, a wonderful person. And, and we saw that on a national level during the Brockton Hospital fire, the 11 on fire. And I joke, I call him Hollywood Brian, but he is, uh, out of respect, he is Fire Chief Brian Nadelli. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here tonight. Um, what a great night for the city of Brockton. Um, Every time I think we, we, we're going to stumble somewhere, we don't stumble. And, and, and I think we've gotten some big hurdles taken care of just getting here tonight where we are. Um, I can't thank the mayor and his leadership um, enough for what he's done to make this happen. I was put on this project um, about a year before I uh, became chief of department under my predecessor, Chief Mike Williams, asked me to uh, begin to participate in this. And... Um, it's been an incredible endeavor ever since. Um, it, it, we're proud to be here, we're proud to be part of this. Um, I think when you look at the bigger picture, um, the mayor has led the charge from the beginning, but again, like he said, the city council has really, truly um, been behind us 110%. I've had a number of talks with the councils about where we were going, why this was important, and explaining the operations end of this entire endeavor to them is very important because I, I know they, they could, tell you by sitting in the city council finance meeting listening to me, I could talk about the fire service in Brockton until I'm blue in the face because I love it so much. But I want them to understand the importance of what's going on here. Um, some of the people that are so truly important to this entire endeavor, and, and I know they've been mentioned here tonight, um, CFO Troy Clarkson um, has become a close personal friend since I've taken this job. Um, every time I want to spend some of the money we have here, Mayor, I, I make sure I talk to Troy first, and he gives me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if I should talk to you next. So um, he has been an ardent supporter of what we're trying to accomplish in the fire department, and I, I can't thank him enough for that. That wasn't me. I'm sure what that was. I think I'm getting timed out. Do you have anything to do with that, Tiff? Um, anyways, um, I, I, I think it's important, and I know the mayor's already spoken um, about the council, about our state, state delegation who's been so important and so in support of this entire endeavor. But I think there are a lot of people from the very beginning that have been in the ground floor on this. Um, Solicitor Bridges, um, Clark Cruz, again, Troy Clarkson, um, the uh, building superintendent, um, Jim Poole, who couldn't make it, he's on vacation tonight. Uh, DPW Commissioner, uh, Pat Hill, Mike Marsh from the, audience, uh, from, the, um, from the procurement office. I don't think people understand. Well, th er everything has to go through all these different bodies, although these people will never have the fortunate being that I have that I'm going to be able to be housed in this property. So all the work they're doing is for the city, for uh, these departments, and for the greater good of the city as a whole. Um, 
Why is this important to the fire department? Many reasons. I can tell you a quick story. Um, this will be obviously be re replacing a building that was built in 1884, uh, 139 years old now. Um, why by Thomas Edison? A lot of you know the story. In 1920, uh, Chief Daly came before the city council and said, um, we've outgrown this station and we need to move on. So we're here, just 100 years later, right? Um, but that, but that's, that's how things happen. We know things aren't going to happen overnight. This is a city. This is a city that's gone through good, bad times. And right now, we're in some very promising, forward-looking times. And, and, and for us to be able to accomplish this is, is, is a great endeavor. Um, one of the things about the fire service is, obviously, for the greater good and the public safety, we're stretched out all over the city for the residents to keep them safe. The administration component of the city, though, is different. As the, as the department grew and the city grew, there's different parts and parcels in different parts of the city. Now, if you look at me, my, my office is up at the high school, up by the high school at Station 6. Um, the training division is down here at Station 1. The platoon deputies that run the shift are down here at Station 1. Fire prevention is right next door. So we have a meeting. We have to corral everybody together in one local spot. The efficiency that will happen, bringing everybody under one roof, it, is immeasurable. Um, and being able to all operate, not only financial efficiency, but also the efficiency of being able to get the job done quicker and faster and without as much to do. So I just want to thank all of you for being here tonight. I want to thank especially all our, our city partners that have been on board. It's been a pleasure to work with Joe, Kevin Sullivan, Sean Schmiegel, Todd Foster and his crew um, because they have made this, you know, they're, they're, we're pretty tough here in Brockton, Kevin, some of you haven't realized. And, um, there's been some ideas that have come up and they've said this has worked in such and such town, this has worked in this such and such town. Well, Brockton's different. We got a little bit of an edge to us and that's okay. So we had to make it work here in the City of Champions. So thank you all for being here tonight. Appreciate it. So before, uh, before we hear from uh, the current uh, Police Chief Brenda Perez, again, lifelong Brocktonian, Brockton High grad. I, I do want to give a shout out to some of the other former police chiefs that were advocating for this many years ago. Paul Stadinsky, Bill Conlon, uh, John Crowley, uh, Manny Gomes, and now Brenda Perez. And I will tell you that when we created uh, the task force, uh, we would do Zooms, and, and when Powell was on the Zooms, and, and, and the Sullivans uh, saw this Sullivan's temper many, many, many times. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I'm just so thankful for all the chiefs that have advocated for the best tools in the toolbox for the men and women that they lead. And so this chief uh, right now, uh, the Brocktonian, Brenda Perez, is truly a leader. And it was my honor to um, appoint both Brenda and Brian to lead the department. So at this time, uh, Brockton Police Chief Brenda Perez. Chief. to thank the Mayor, City Council, State Delegation for your support to making this happen. I was actually a student here and took bilingual classes here. So this is bittersweet, but I'm excited for the future. This is an exciting moment for our officers and our department. As the Chief of Police, I stand before you with, profound, with a profound sense of anticipation. This new building not only signifies a physical transformation, in our city's landscape, but also represents a new era of community-centered policing. With its advanced infrastructure and innovative technologies, our new public safety building will provide the tools required for modern policing and the space that is desperately needed for all of our first responders. But it is not just about a new landscape or a new technology. Ultimately, this facility will enable us to protect and serve more efficiently and effectively while providing an accessible space to focus on the evolving needs of our community. Working with residents and businesses is vital to providing the highest level of public safety. We look forward to the new building, fostering more opportunities to strengthen those bonds and to welcoming all members of our community. This new public safety building will be the center where partnerships and collaboration grow and thrive as we continue with our efforts and thrive for a better Brockton. Thank you.
So I thank uh, 144 President Bill Hill. I, I want to thank Derek Salomon and Brian Maker from the patrolmen and the supervisors of the police. So when I created that Zoom where we would kind of have the meeting of the minds and the vetting, um, a lot of people said, what are you, crazy? You're going to have the union presidents on the Zoom? What are you, nuts? I'm the labor mayor, number one, and I also think that they could articulate to us what they're hearing from, from the team, right? And so I thought that was the important aspect to do. They brought really wonderful, wonderful ideas and suggestions, uh, as did the Chiefs as well. Uh, so I want to thank them for what they have done and what they continue to do. So we've heard from two of the departments. We have two more departments, right? So it's going to be one building with four departments. The next one is uh, Steve Hook uh, from Brockton Emergency Management. And I had known Steve uh, under Mayor Carpenter's administration, but I really didn't get to know the man and the public servant until I became mayor. And then that COVID-19 pandemic uh, raised its ugly head. I think I spoke to Steve uh, more times each day than I definitely spoke to my wife, Maria. Um, he is a guy that, that loves the city of Brockton. He is a guy that is uh, internationally recognized. He won an international award for the management of emergency situations. So at this time, I want to uh, welcome and I want to publicly thank Steve Hook and all of the employees for BEMA that truly went to bat for us each and every day. When I talked about 536 people that perished during the pandemic, it would have been a lot more without the efforts of Steve and his team. So Steve, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, elected officials, city officials, residents, vis visitors, and friends. I am truly honored and humbled to be part of such a monumental day here in the city of Champions. And to have been included in this as part of this Brockton Public Safety Building Committee. The construction of the new public safety campus will surely add a layer of security and safety to the residents of the city. I am particularly excited about the inclusion of the new operations, emergency operations center within this facility and technology and resources that will be available to assist the city to respond to and recover from natural disasters and emergencies. I'm a lifelong resident of Brockton, born, raised my three beautiful children here today, uh, went to public schools, I love the city of Brockton, and this is certainly a proud day for the city, and I'm thrilled to be a part of it, thank you. So if you went to Brock, I was in the red building. Who was in the red building? Raise your hand if you were there. Hey, yeah, red. Oh, there you go. Um, well, yellow and blue and green and well. They weren't red, though. Azure, yeah, Azure, you're right. Um, but if you went to Brockton High, you knew upstairs in the core, that's where IT was, right? And it continues to this day to be there. And they do an unbelievable job uh, each and every day. I don't know anything about tech uh, technology, as you all know. I don't even know how to use my phone sometimes. But this guy does. He's the master of IT, and at this time I want to welcome the acting director, Ted Medeiros, from IT. Thank you, everyone. I, I promised to cut it back a little bit, being the last one to go. I know everyone's anxious to keep it moving. But I, I, I can't start out without saying a quick thank you to the mayor, the CFO, all our elected officials, all the prior elected officials, fire chief, uh, police chiefs, we have a lot of people here tonight that when I, st I started in 2001 and I, and I worked with a lot of those people over those years. So again, I, I really want to say thank you. And it's, it, like Steve said, it's truly an honor just to be up here and um, accept th this, this new building and this uh, new workspace for my staff. Um, <clears throat> but with, with all that said, the IT department really needs to be with police and fire and the BEMA staff in, in what I call a physically secure facility. Now, I know people have different um, opinions about that. We're in Brockton High School, there is a school police staff there and available, but I think my staff is definitely gonna be a lot happier with this new location. So again, I can't say thank you enough. Adding this data center with office space not only puts us in the same building as two out of three of our biggest customers, it brings us within walking distance of the third one, which is City Hall. 
and I'm, I'm going to um, cite my source here, but a couple of weeks ago I heard Chief Nardelli talking about current and prior chiefs, mayors, councils, and others, other employees, other residents, etc., putting a lot of time and effort into the new rescue truck they put on the road and staffed. And a very similar process happened for the ITC office with this project. About half of my current staff has been involved from day one of the concept, concept, excuse me, or possibility of moving. One of them will retire a few months before we actually move in according to the current timeline, but we will definitely invite him to visit once we're all set up. He was a huge supporter of this. And I know Todd, I'm here, like I said before, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut this off, but we truly appreciate everything being done here and what it means for technology moving forward for, for the city. And uh, I thank you again and have a great night. Ted's a Marine, and I want to thank you for your service to our nation, Ted. I want to thank you. So every, uh, every Sunday night uh, during the pandemic, I'd get on a Zoom with mayors across the Commonwealth. It was led by uh, then Boston Mayor Marty Walsh and, and then uh, Mayor of Salem, Ken Driscoll. And Marty's gone on to serve as, as Labor Secretary, and now he's probably got the dream job of everybody around here, right, for the NHL. And Kim's our lieutenant governor, but um, I was the rookie mayor. And so I would talk to mayors throughout the Commonwealth, and most of them would say, we're pausing construction, we're pausing construction, we have to stop construction right now. And I said, in Brockton, we can't. And it was kind of like dead silence on a Sunday night, and they kind of looked at me like, what the hell is this guy talking about? I said, listen, I'm a guy from Brockton. If I pause construction right now in Brockton, we're going to be 10 years going the wrong way. So we're going to keep construction going. The train's going to keep going down the track, but we're going to adhere to all the health protocols and all the, all everything, right? Everything's going to be not safe, but if we stop construction, it's going to be fatal. And, uh, and then I spoke to Governor Charlie Baker at the time and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, who really fell in love with the city of Brockton. And I did a walking tour with the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and I, I actually did the same tour with uh, current Governor Maura Haley and Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll. And, Every time I do the walking tour, right, they, they, they call my office and I say, please put on your speakers because we're going to walk and talk around Brockton. And, uh, and they do, right? They do. Uh, matter of fact, Ed Augustus yesterday, Secretary of Housing, I asked him if he wanted to do a walking tour with me. And I said, you got to have your sneakers. The guy told me they're in his, his car already. So we're doing that next week. But every time I walked with these elected officials, same thing with Steve Lynch and Ed Markey, every time I walked, I would show them here. I'd come up Frederick Douglass, the old high street. I'd show them the Liberty Tree. I'd show the Hotel Grayson and Brockton, uh, Brockton Beer Company and, and, and you know what's going on here in the core of the city. But then I'd always show them this, I'd always show them this. And I'd tell them what we're doing. And first of all, they were astounded that we got $98 million approved by elected officials. But Brockton's different, right? Because we understand that you know, we're all in this together. It doesn't matter if you're legislative side, executive side, school side, we're, we're doing it for a common purpose. But then I started getting calls and meetings with people that are on Forbes magazine, these billionaire guys, right? Guys that I never thought I'd meet. Guy David Freeman from Nashville, he owns the Nashville Predators, the hockey team. A guy Sam Slater from Newton owns the, the, the new NHL team, the Kraken out in Seattle. Another guy, Brian Kahn, that told me he was gonna buy Coles. I said, what do you mean, the one over at Stoughton? He said, no, the whole, whole chain. Jeez, the whole chain. <laughs> but these guys are high net worth, right? And they'd come in and we'd do the walk and talk. Uh, and I'd always show them this location. And every single time, they were amazed that we were able to do this. Amazed. But they also said, that speaks volumes, so the return on investment is real for Brockton, Massachusetts, right? right. Turn, it is. <laughs> and, and so we're going to continue we're gonna continue to develop. Um, you know, we, we are doing a lot of development right now in the core of the city, right? Transit-oriented development. You jump on the train. You know it. You get in the South Station 35 minutes. Jump in your car. Get to Providence in 30 minutes. So geographically, we're located unbelievable. But it's the people in Brockton that makes the investment real, right? So I literally, and my, my mother and father are probably going to faint right now. I literally just met the king of Cameroon. Cameroon, I had to look up. I knew it was in Africa. I didn't know where it was. But he literally was just in my office for three hours. And before he left, he knighted me. So you can call me Sir Robert if you want to. But I got knighted today. But I only say that. Because Brockton is truly on the radar of so many different people, not just in the Commonwealth or in the country, but in the world. Think about that, in the world. 
So when we did our due diligence, because we wanted to hire the best, we wanted to hire the best construction company to build this unbelievable dream that's going to come to realization. We did a uh, hiring committee. I designated a hiring committee. I didn't want to be anything involved in it. I peeled back. I said, I'm the mayor. I'm not, I'm not in this. You guys in it. And they did a lot of due diligence. I want to thank all of them. But they all came back with Suffolk Construction. So then I, I said, okay, Suffolk Construction. I've seen the signs in Boston. I don't really know much about them. But I'll tell you, they're doing a hell of a job in the city of Presidents, Quincy, Massachusetts, doing a public safety building. And Tommy Koch's a friend of mine, the mayor of Quincy, and I say to him, listen, you're only the city of Presidents. For Christ's sakes, we're the city of champions. So what they're doing in Quincy is great, but they have to do it better here. So Mr. Fish, John Fish is the CEO, and unfortunately he couldn't make it tonight. A friend of his passed away and he's at a wake. But the representatives from Suffolk are here, and I'd love to welcome them to the podium tonight. Great, thank you, Mayor. I am uh, Keith Couch. I'm the general manager for Suffolk and I oversee our operations here in the Northeast. Uh, and I can tell you we're super excited to be here um, and so grateful for the opportunity. Um, you know, in about 60 days, you're gonna see uh, a lot of our, our team members here walking this site. We've got a few of them here with us uh, tonight to get a chance to say hello to them. Uh, I'm sure they would appreciate it. Uh, but those folks uh, that you're going to see, they're going to be wearing a hat just like this. There's a lot on the table back here. And there's a, a couple of important things about this hat. Number one is it's going to keep our men and women safe, just like the folks who are going to work in this building. And that's important. Another couple of things that are important is you're going to notice the colors. They're red, white, and blue. They're red, white, and blue for a reason. It's the exact same color that's on the back of the hat on this American flag. Now, on the front, you're going to see it says American contract, America's contractor on the front, okay? Now, the hat's important, but it's not as important as the people who are going to wear it. And if you get the chance to meet some of these folks, you're going to find out a couple of things about it. We've got some folks that have been members of the community, gone to school here. You're going to find out that our people are proud builders, we're proud Americans, and then our team is proud to be here and can't wait to get this job done for you. And I can't think of anything more fitting than America's contractor building a state-of-the-art facility for men and women who have dedicated their lives to public service. Mayor, we're thankful to be here. We can't wait to get started. We can't wait to be here in 2025. Come with us. So just three more things before we actually go uh, through the groundbreaking. A couple things if we could. Uh, this is a historic building, right? And what I had said at the onset is you have to learn from the past, right? The history to forge ahead to the future. So I made a pledge to everybody that aspects of this unbelievable architectural piece of the old Brockton High is going to be incorporated into the new public safety building. So when you're on the West Elm Street side, all the granite and the pillars, they're all going to be incorporated in. Some of the copper around the window is going to be incorporated in. We're going to have a peace garden uh, on, on the Goddard Street side. It's going to be incorporated into some of the aspects of the architecture from this building. They're going to repurpose and reclaim and revitalize the old building. So. Uh, I'm proud that Suffolk uh, concurred with that and it's going to meet that standards. Um, the last thing, uh, two more things I want to do. Um, we talk about the city of Brockton, right? We talk about City of Champions. We talk about Rocky Marciano. Uh, you know, we talk about Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Um, we talk about the city as a whole as champions. But unfortunately this morning, the city took a blow. We actually lost uh, a truly phenomenal person, May Lang who uh, is the mom of Marvelous Marvin Hagler and Rocky Robin, Rocky Robin Sims. Uh, and Mae Lang, um, I was just with her recently over Massasoit. She was a special person. She was from Newark, but Brockton was her adopted home. She loved Brockton. So she passed this morning, unfortunately, in her sleep, and our thoughts and prayers are with the Hagler Sims family. So at this time, out of respect for Mae Lang and what she meant to the city of Brockton, just do a moment of silence, please. May she rest in peace. 
So tonight's a, a great night. Um, we're going to be doing another great night on Friday night. We're doing a, a little kickoff over at, at the War Memorial as well. So we're investing ARPA money into the Mary Cruz Kennedy Senior Center, the Council on Aging Senior Center, adding 4,000 square feet. Thanks to our friends in Washington with the ARPA money. We're using ARPA money to repurpose and revitalize out of respect for all the veterans that have served and continue to serve our nation to allow us to assemble. And I know a lot of the people that work for the city of Brock and the police and fire are veterans. I know Jeff Thompson's a veteran. I, I know uh, John Bacia is a, a Marine from my office, Mos Rodriguez. Let's go around and applause for all the veterans. So before we, uh, we actually conclude this part of the ceremony and we, we, we go over there, I, I, want to, uh, I want to ask the CFO to come back up to the podium. Troy Clarkson is not just a, a fantastic financial genius, the guy can sing. Uh, recently, uh, John Henry asked him to sing, it wasn't the American National Anthem, it's Canadian, but that's okay. Fenway Park, my state of the city address at Brockton High, I asked him to sing the National Anthem. So I know that each and every day when the men and women walk into this awesome, awesome building to be built, they're going to see uh, the stars and stripes of our wonderful nation. And so we're going to conclude this tonight by, by having Troy Claxon sing the national anthem. Then I'm going to ask us all to please go over to the right of Squad A. We're going to go to the dirt pile. We're going to do a wonderful event. So Mr. Claxon, please. Please stand and join me in honoring this great nation of red, white, and blue. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, see, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Thank you, Troy. Thank you very much. So at this time, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, all the speakers, uh, all the elected officials, um, all former elected officials, former mayors, former councilors, um, and anybody and everybody, we're going to head over to the uh, to the dirt pile over there. And um, those that are going to be uh, actually hoisting the shovels, if you want to grab a Suffolk hat back there, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Two, three. Thank you, everybody.